But the world still needs a king. A different kind of king. In a different kind of kingdom. The world needs King Jesus. And the kingdom of God. No other king like Jesus. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, which commemorates and signifies the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem on the Sunday before His crucifixion. Today we're going to look at this in in the context of the Scriptures, in which is, is placed for us to better understand who this King is, what the nature of His kingship is today, and what He's called us to in His kingdom. Immediately before his entrance, the Gospels record the healing of the blind men and also the raising of of Lazarus from the dead. And many of the people were excited. They were in jubilation because the Messiah had come and they praised him on this day, Jesus, the son of David. But there would be controversy. There would be division, and ultimately, of course, we'd know the end of the week would come. Today, we see that he is proclaimed as king, but he is a king like no other. No king like Jesus. Verse 5 points to the, the significance of what this means. Tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming to you. Gentle and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus rides in on a donkey's colt, not on a horse, not on a chariot, but a colt. Humble, lowly entrance into the city of Jerusalem. Here is a relief of of Titus. He was a great military commander in in Rome and also one of the emperors of Rome. This relief shows him coming into the city and this is the goddess Roma and he's being crowned with the victor's crown here and the people are are with him and the the kings, the, the commanders would come in in a victory parade with the prisoners of war behind them, being paraded through the streets of the city as conquerors. Titus was the Roman general who conquered Jerusalem. He's the one who besieged the city in 70 A.D., destroyed the city, destroyed the temple, and put an end to the Jewish rebellion against Rome. And they built an arch, the arch of Titus, after his conquest. And that arch is still in Rome today. A symbol of his military victory. Here's a painting, can't see it real good. I've got some close-up shots here, we'll go through a little bit, of, a, of another Roman general, Emilius Paulus, who defeated King Perseus of Macedon in 168 B.C. And the picture is the king is coming in. Here are the horses, the, the chariot, and the prisoners behind him. And they come into the city in this glorious parade of the victor. Here he is, a close-up of him coming in. Shows him here with the people behind him. He's got the king that he had just conquered and his wife and family there behind him, humiliated in this parade. There's an archway, a gate, and there's the temple to their god, Jupiter, all in this picture. It shows the, the gods and the people and the conquering, the king, the triumph that takes place. In our passage, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel, the city of David, as the son of David, the Messiah, the king. And it says He comes in, Gentle, mounted on a donkey. You see, he's a different kind of king. And that's why there was so much controversy. 
That's why there was so much division. They wanted the Messiah to come in on the war horse, on the chariot with his captives in tow. They wanted the Romans to be chained behind him, being led in to victorious Israel. But Jesus did not come in that way. King Jesus will be crucified. He'll be crucified by his own people. He'll be crucified by the Romans. In Matthew 20, this is the chapter before 21. This is the context moving into this triumphal entry. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and for the third time he tells them, the Son of Man must die. He says in chapter 20, verse 18, see, we are going up to Jerusalem the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. They will condemn him to death. The King, King Jesus, would be crucified. Verse 19 they will hand him over to the Gentiles. To be mocked, flogged, and crucified. And on the third day, he will be raised. Yes, it's a devastating word to the disciples of his crucifixion, but it's also a word of hope and salvation because of the resurrection that takes place a week from this Sunday. King Jesus is like no other king because King Jesus will die for his enemies and set them free. Did you hear what I said? King Jesus is like no other king, no other conqueror because he dies for his enemies. There is no other king like Jesus. 